In the summer of 1969, the astronauts aboard NASA spaceflight Apollo 11 on their way to the moon captured an image of the world in its entirety for the very first time. 21 years before the Voyager mission and the poetics of Carl Sagan's Pale Blue Dot, the Italian photographer Luigi Ghiri stared at the snapshot of our planet and contemplated its totalizing potential. He wrote, It was not only the image of the entire world, but the only image that contained all other images of the world. Graffiti, frescoes, paintings, writings, photographs, books, films. It was at once the representation of the world and all representations of the world. This dialectic between macro and micro, and between the object and its representation, stayed at the forefront of Geary's mind throughout his career. As did the phrase, come pensare per immagini, which, in his words, held the essence of his work. Geary used photography as a way to think about the world. He was at once enchanted by and apprehensive of images. Their omnipresence in everyday life was blurring the boundaries between reality and illusion. But he also believed in their aesthetic value. He wanted to direct attention towards the unusual hiding in the banality of daily urban life. Geary's photographs, in this way, teeter on the edge of the surreal, but never make the leap entirely. They are also quite funny. The result of this approach is a body of work full of charm and heart, one that encourages viewers to slow down and take note of the often overlooked. Geary's photographs, like the title of one of his posthumous exhibitions, have us thinking to ourselves, it's beautiful here, isn't it? Luigi Ghiri was born in 1943 in north-central Italy. Before committing fully to photography in 1970, Ghiri worked for a decade as a landscape surveyor. He had a meticulous eye for property lines and sharp angles, which informed his compositions of buildings and streets. This is perhaps one of the most distinct features of his style, an element that is synonymous with his name and easy to recognize once you browse his work for a bit. Take, for example, this shot of Travigliano Mazzano from 1985. This is a playful composition that makes use of every element in the frame. The two buildings are balanced and symmetrical in their own right, but Geary put them to greater use in order to frame the negative space. The washed-out hills in the background align just right with the edge of the lake, which itself connects to the two corners of the structures. When combined with the shrubbery in the midground, we have a window to the water that is perfectly segmented. And when flipped 180 degrees, the negative space makes its own building of sorts. This level of precision is a product of Geary's conviction to slow down and live in a space before photographing it. In The Complete Essays, Geary mentions how important it was to him to direct the gaze towards the unnoticed. He wrote, We must think of photography as a way to show the other our sense of awe before the world, and not as a tool for mass appeasement. Part of Geary's awe before the world was just how saturated it was with images. Again, in the essays, he wrote, I began to realize that reality was increasingly becoming an enormous photograph, or photomontage. Many of his own pieces could be called photomontages themselves. Taken directly head-on, images like these can be divided into separate images of their own. They lack a certain depth of field, which flattens them entirely and creates tension at the dividing line. Another signature element present across his body of work is utilizing images, like on advertisements and billboards, as subjects for other images. Geary was fascinated by the dialogue that opens up when such juxtapositions are captured in a photograph. He's of course being clever in these shots, but never deceptive. These are not manipulations or collages, and that gives them that surreal aura I mentioned earlier. This image of a ship embodies this idea and is cited often when discussing this element of his work. The torn edge here is doubling as a wave, and the flatness of the composition gives the visual pun its needed space to function. Here's another fun one, an empty sky with a small label at the bottom edge that reads azzurro. This is the Italian word for light blue, which in the context of whatever building it is attached to could mean something different than what Geary framed instead. Or perhaps this shot of a cloudy sky flowing behind a series of electrical wires. Geary thought the wires could double as sheet music without notes. Sometimes Geary was not out to be clever, but just observant. Certain images of his have that serendipitous energy that is usually associated with street photography, a snapshot in passing with its own feeling of familiarity and wonder. Take this image from 1973 in Modena. It has that careful eye for angles and tangents, but the real beauty is found in the framing of the elderly gentleman and his dog. The flatness of the photograph and the black edge of the building connote a panorama of a dollhouse. 
and the astute posture of the dog only adds to that aesthetic. It's a lovely image of a man waiting for business, but in that waiting, there is a certain poetic quality that Geary was so keen at bringing forward. Here's another favorite of mine from 1977. The jet stream cutting across the sky is a testament to many of Geary's ideas about photography, namely that even the most obvious view of a place can still surprise us. Geary's relationship with human subjects was often distant and detached. He had a tendency to shoot figures from behind. Photos of the back of people's heads could be an exhibit all its own. This was always intentional, of course. For a man so surgical in his art, it's hard to chalk up anything to coincidence. Geary stated that photographing from behind gave a person infinite possible identities. And echoing Pirandello here, he saw all of us actors posing against a manufactured backdrop. Images like this one of an elderly couple approaching the Dolomites have always had an estranging effect on me. There's a certain level of blissful ignorance present in this shot of a couple all alone playing on the beach. Both of these photos are tinted with the unreal and have a hint of the melancholic. Melancholy reaches its full effect in the photographs in which humans should be present but aren't. Photos of beaches void of beachgoers, of park benches without attendants, of the empty farmlands of Emilia-Romagna. These pastel images of Geary's homeland could be synonymous with the bittersweet atmosphere and nostalgia of Fellini's Amarcord, a story from the same region of Italy. This photo is another one of my favorites. It is simple in its subject and in its palette. The horizon line intersecting perfectly with the top of the slide is so Geary-esque, and the desaturated tones have us imagining this was a chilly day at the seaside. Luigi Geary died suddenly at the age of 49 from a heart attack. He loved Bob Dylan and referenced his songs often in his essays. He also called upon the writing of Fernando Pessoa and the photographs of Walker Evans for inspiration and insight. Geary loved the art of map making. As noted with the photograph of Earth from Apollo 11, he was forever mystified by the relationship between humans and locations. In each of his photographs lies an aspect of the artist. These images are a visual autobiography of a curious man who never grew jaded of the world around him. This was the last image found on his film strip before he died. It was a foggy day in January 1992. Luigi Giri was taking photographs of the Po Valley, the humble countryside he loved the most. <laughs> 